All right, guys, so we are headed into Disney Springs through the parking lot, but this is, I mean, there's a, like a really nice sign at the very, very front when you're driving into the place, but I didn't pull out the phone in time. But when you get through the parking, you go through the security now. They didn't used to have this a couple years ago, pre-C19. They didn't have security at the to get in here, you, but now you have to go through, walk through the metal detector, they check your bags, all that other stuff to make sure you don't have any kind of weapon or anything on you. Of course, I got pulled over because I have a tripod and I have all this other stuff. But you get to walk down here. I don't remember which one we parked in, but you walk down into, it's basically shopping and a really nice uh, fountain. Welcome to Disney Springs Code of Conduct. Basically, I'm sure it says don't be an a-hole and uh, don't do stupid things and don't vandalize the property. I'm assuming that's what the majority of it is. But we're gonna walk around through here. We love this place. It's basically just like an outdoor mall with a lot of really cool restaurants. And then there's a lot of, um, like, I don't wanna say activities, but there's a lot of fun stuff to do. So we're gonna go find some food now. We didn't eat breakfast this morning at the hotel, so we decided to wait till we got here to Disney Springs, go find something to eat. Now I want you guys to see this thing that is extremely, extremely cool. So there's this um, uh, hot air balloon kind of thing. It, it, it normally is down on the ground over here, but you can pay, I don't know how much it is, I need to figure that out, but you can pay to go up on there and lift up and you can see, in theory, you're supposed to be able to see like parts of all of the parks, Epcot and Magic Kingdom and stuff like that from up there. To me, I don't really think it's high enough, but I could be wrong. You guys will be able to see kind of how large this place is. Obviously it doesn't look massive on a little billboard thing like this, but there is a ton to do here, food wise, shopping wise, games. You've got Legoland here also for people who are curious where Legoland is. It's here in uh, Disney Springs, which is a lot of fun to go into and build your own little Lego things. So we're walking in, I hear these two behind me having a conversation and he says, well, they may recognize me, but the odds are gonna approach me and say anything is small. And she says, why? And he goes, do I look approachable? Because he always has a, um, a man's version of RBF, if you will. I like this little bridge area, crosses over this little baby lagoon looking thing. It's just so incredibly pretty and peaceful. Isn't that pretty? And then you've got an ice cream cupcake place over here called like Sprinkles or something. You've got Disney Springs Bottling Co. And then back over here, technically that's a Frontera Cocina. If you guys have ever heard of Frontera, the Mexican restaurant. And then you've got like a little welcome center. The burger place that we went to last time we here where I got recognized is right over there. So that was kind of cool. But the water here is beautiful. For those of you who don't know, that's the back end of, or the back side of Planet Hollywood. Yeah, so here's the other side. The, the ice cream cupcake place is called Sprinkles. I don't know what the little towery things are over there. They look like smoke towers. I don't know what that is over there. So we'll have to make our way over there and find out. But they have a lot of really cool restaurants in here. So the last time we're here, we wanted to go eat at this place, which is a Japanese restaurant called Morimoto Asia. The sign is really cool. But we came here last time and we walked in to get a table. And we're like, hey, just so you know, we're out of chicken. And it's like, how do you as a Chinese or Asian restaurant, I don't know if it's Chinese or Japanese, but as an Asian restaurant, how do you run out of chicken? But the place is really cool looking. And at night it's all lit up and stuff, which would be even cooler, but we're hungry now. So we're not waiting till dinner. So after looking at the menu, after we ate at um, Cowfish last night and had sushi, this is mostly sushi. There's a couple small plates, but then we realized it doesn't even mention the word chicken anywhere. So maybe they don't have chicken back again, but this isn't really a very interesting menu. So we're actually gonna end up bypassing this. Y'all also 90 degrees, the kids ro rolling around in a sweatshirt. She's definitely my kid. So we've decided to go eat at this uh, barbecue place instead, but first, Pandora, listen, I love Disney stuff and I love jewelry, but I've never really been a big fan of Pandora stuff. I don't know why it's such a big deal. I know a lot of people love it, but I've never really been able to get on board with it. It feels like an, ex I mean, it's an expensive charm bracelet, but I don't know why I don't like it. If you guys love them, please let me know in the comments below because some people love it and some people hate it. I'm just kind of curious. I mean, I don't hate it, but I just don't see the, they just don't have a full draw for me. Let me put it that way. But they're still pretty, just not my style. So this is what we decided on, uh, I think, is the Polite Pig. We pass it every time we come in. We've never ever gone inside, never been to it, but it's always pretty busy. So in theory, it should be good, or it should maybe it's just busy because there's a ton of people here and you gotta eat somewhere. But I'll let you guys know once we get in there. 
All right, so we've decided to come in here to the Polite Pig, but I'm gonna check out this menu first. It's kind of like a lot of places are here where you stand in line, and then <laughs> once you order, they give you a number and they'll bring it over to your table. But I'm not very good at deciding quickly, so we're gonna take a look at this menu and see what we can find, and then we'll order. All right, so we've ordered some food. The little bar section in here is actually really cute, really nice. I wanna show you what we've done here. So this is, what is it, the Polite Pig. And I got myself a Caesar salad with some chicken because that sounded good. The kid got a chicken, a fried chicken sandwich and a salad and some fries, so I'm gonna sell some of her fries. The man, because he's smart, got some Brussels sprouts with his pulled pork. Now, they have a thing called a sweet tea old fashioned. I want y'all to see the total, $81, right? I did leave a tip. So you go up front and you order on your own, right? And, uh, well not on your own, there's a lady there that takes your order. And then as you're paying, it does the thing, would you like to leave a tip? 18%, 20%, 22% is what it says now. Remember it used to be 10, 15, 20, now it's a couple of different numbers. And I believe our food came out extremely fast. Hold on, let me show you. That was so quick. Yes, that's us. So fast. Him, thank you so much. Her also. And then the Caesar with Christmas. Me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Are you waiting for anything else on that paper? Not that I know of. That should be everything. Thank and you. Can I get you any ketchup, barbecue sauce, anything like that? You want ketchup or anything? Ketchup if you don't mind. Thank you. So those Brussels sprouts look super good. So there's the pulled pork. Coleslaw that I can't eat because it has fennel in it and that and I do not get along. I got cr side crispy chicken and Caesar salad with carrots. That fried chicken sandwich is massive. Did you know there's barbecue sauce on it? You didn't realize there's barbecue sauce. Are you gonna eat it? You're gonna have to, or you're gonna be hungry. Side salad. So all of this for 80 something bucks. Now back to the tip. So it asks when you put the card in if you wanna leave a tip. You know at normal, normal restaurants, you pay at the end and then you leave your tip at the end based off of what the service is like. But the girl up front was really smart. So when you do the, um, the, the credit card thing and it says do you wanna leave a tip, she says, Keep in mind that if you choose to tip, you're tipping not just myself, but every single server, all the cooks, the entire staff will split it at the end of the night. So she lets you know that you're not just tipping her at the front, whatever percentage. You're not just tipping one person that brings you your food. It does get split amongst everybody. And the people that brought our food are also over at the condiment section getting ketchup and things for us. We don't have to do anything. If we want more food or something else, we don't have to get up and get it. They'll come over here and we can order something or get whatever and stuff like that. So. So far, pretty good. Let's try this food and see what it tastes like. All right, so I have a question for you guys. Like, again, I see these things happen. I think to myself, really? Only because I've waited tables before. I've worked in restaurants. So this family gets through ordering. I, I went up to get ranch because the kid wanted ranch for her fries. Yeah, her fries. Um, so I got up to go get some ranch. And I'm standing there, and this family, this guy and his wife and two kids come through, and they order food. The kids and the wife are super happy. The guy looks like he'd rather somebody, like, shoot him in the head than be here, honestly. But he ordered a beer. Now, when you order your stuff, they bring it out to your table with the food, whether it's drinks or whatever else. And so, thank you very much. So um, the guy, he goes, I'm paying. He goes, can I have my beer? And the guy behind the counter says, everything comes out at once. And the guy was like, I know, but I want my beer now. So I'm going to stand here until you make my beer. And I was like, ew. Like, what kind of entitled, like, just... Well, here's the problem. What he doesn't know, which we didn't know either, everything comes out so fast. Oh, yes. So no, yeah. what she should have probably said was, it'll be at your table quickly. So, could have said that, but with that kind of customer, you kind of, sometimes it's easier to just give in and, and do it or whatever else. But here's my question. I wonder if he's gonna get an extra beer brought to his table because the people have already made it, so now he gets a free beer. Like, I wonder if that was the goal or if he's just an a-hole in general. I'm, just something I saw and I was like, ew, like that's the energy you wanna bring. I don't, I don't understand that kind of energy. That's not how I roll, so it doesn't make sense to me, but that's that. On, back to my, on. wait, what? I was about to say, back to you, my food. Why don't you taste this? Ew, I don't like bourbon. Sweet tea old fashioned. Sweet tea old fashioned. This has bourbon in it, right? It's a handcrafted cocktail. Oh, wow. That is extremely good. And I don't like bourbon, generally speaking. Like, I like scotch whiskey blend. That's what I have, right? Doors or Dewars or however you say that. McAllen. McAllen. Those are scotch whiskey blends. I like those. I'm not a 
Maker's Mark, uh, Buffalo Trace kind of girl like bourbon, but that is actually ridiculously good. So if you guys ever come to the Polite Pig and want to order a sweet tea old fashioned, I give it a thumbs up. I almost made it. I didn't quite make it all the way through. I ate most of the chicken, most of the salad. There's a big pieces of romaine lettuce, by the way, and some really crunchy croutons. So she pulled her sandwich apart. She says she didn't love the bread, but I don't know why. The waffle fries, she didn't finish those, but they were pretty good. Yes, no, yeah. meh, okay. The seasoning wasn't the best. The seasoning wasn't the best, she said. And then the fried chicken, she didn't expect the barbecue sauce, let alone how much of it. So she pulled it off the sandwich and ate it. But over here, you can see there's nothing left because he killed the entire thing and they nicely came and took it for him. I'm gonna finish up my sweet, half sweet, half unsweet tea. Maybe one more bite of salad, and then we're gonna head out into the wilderness out there. All right, so that was really good. I'm very full, so now is the perfect time to go walk around uh, when your stomach is overflowing and you want to nap. But we're gonna go walk around some more. I want to check out. Let me show you. First off, look at how many balloons there are. So they sell the balloons here. I've ne those are the R2D2 ones. I haven't seen those before. And sometimes they have the big ones that have like a Mickey head inside them. And you got frozen. Those are cool. But I want to go to the Lululemon store here while we can. Check it out. This one's killing her lemonade. We'll go here and then I'm going to take you guys over to the Disney store. I weirdly like Lululemon. I know a lot of people think that they are expensive and technically they are, but the lifetime warranty on them makes them completely worth it in my opinion. If they start to unravel or anything else, you literally bring them back in. It can be six years down the road and they will swap them out for you. All right, so we ended up buying stuff that we weren't going to buy, but you guys see that one back there? It matches the logo for Scroll Tribe, so I have to have it, right? Yes? Right? What? Right. Yeah. All right, so I got myself a green one that's this color because that's just, I mean, come on now, and a hunter green one to match the Jeep because I don't ever carry anything. I always have my keys in one hand, my phone in the other because I don't like wearing purses. I'm wearing this crossbody Adidas bag right now, and I absolutely hate it. I don't like things that go over my boobs like this. And I don't carry purses on my shoulder like I used to when I was younger. So fanny packs, <laughs> I'm so glad they made a comeback. But the kid's extremely excited because she got the red Lulu lemon bag and she uses these for her lunchbox. So I don't ever have to buy her another lunchbox. She'll just go back and forth between this red one and the black one she's got. So it's kind of a win-win all around if you think about it. So what's cool is there's actually a Harley Davidson store here in Disney Springs, which is weird. Levi's, you got World of Disney here. You got random stuff. I don't know what that says over there. But I swear this place is busier than Universal Studios was, but I guess because it's free to get in here. You don't have to pay to park or anything like that. But this store here is where everybody goes. It's the first place most people go when they come in, is to go in there and get all the, the Disney gear, because they have everything that you could buy at the actual parks here without having to go into the actual parks. There's Legoland over there and a little volcano in the background, but we'll get to that in just a second. First, we're gonna go in here just so you guys can see what it's like, because it's an impressive building. All the brick and beams and everything. And it's just non-stop Disney gear. I don't, I don't know what to do with this design either. There's so many new designs of everything that's so weird to me that I don't really know what to do with it. I don't love whatever that is. They even have mobile checkout now, so you don't have to stand in the crazy long lines that they end up with. But this is kind of neat, right? All the stuff. So much stuff. And then don't forget all the Mickey ears. Easiest place to get Mickey ears in here, or if you go to the parks. But they have all different kinds. For those of you who are curious, price-wise, like they got Star Wars ones. You're paying, y'all, paying $55 for a pair of ears. I wonder if they're all different though. This one, lightsaber ones. Let's see how much the lightsaber ones are, just out of curiosity. Lightsaber ones have no price. Oh no, and then I'm breaking them. I don't see a price on the lightsaber ones, that's weird, but okay. Just give you guys an idea of how big the store is. You guys can kind of tell from in here just how big it is. Whole section de dedicated to like coffee mugs and stuff. And then you have house to kitchen decor and living room decor and just all kinds of random stuff. You guys remember the little Eeyore story I told you? I love it when we come in here and find Winnie the Pooh stuff. And normally they're not front and center. That's normally like a back whatever. But I guess right now is when they're bringing Winnie the Pooh back out and trying to 
push him a little bit more than Mickey or Minnie. Those are really cute bags. So I made the comment that it's kind of interesting they're bringing out so much like, um, you guys can see over here, Alice in Wonderland stuff and uh, Winnie the Pooh, and she says, because they're getting rid of Mickey. Where did you hear that though? Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. Well, I don't know that. I told you this. Why are they getting rid of? Because uh, it's time's up. They need a new mascot. But Disney is Mickey. No, Disney's Disney. Okay, good point, good point. You're so there's the new mobile checkout, shop and scan. So you scan over here, get your bag, check out with these ladies or make sure maybe they check your, oh, your seat, you're fine. Maybe they check your seat like they do at Walmart, but now you have the mobile checkout so you don't have to stand in the line with the cashiers. Some people will prefer that. Now we're gonna go take a look over here at Legos. I think it's always been the dragon. It was a dragon last time I was here too. I like the dragon personally. You guys can see Starbucks right next to it. I think there's like three Starbucks places in here. But that volcano over there uh, is part of Rainforest Cafe. They have pretty decent food. The inside's all like a rainforest, obviously. It's definitely geared towards children. Then you've got Lego land here. Let's take a walk inside and see what we can find. Oh wait, exit only. We gotta find the entrance. I never know where the entrance is. Take a little detour over here to the little dragon. He's cute. He doesn't do anything fun like the dragon at Harry Potter. He's just in the water chilling. It's kind of cool. You have a Chewbacca, Darth Vader, Legos. They even have it for Anna and Elsa and, um, oh, I forgot his name. What's his name? What's his name? Olaf, thank you. I was having a brain fart. So you have Anna, Anna and Elsa <laughs> and Olaf. But the most popular one, I think the most popular one is probably Mickey from Fantasia. When I was little, the Fantasia movie scared me because it was really weird to me. Now I think it's much cooler. But when you're younger, you expect it to be a little bit more, but the music they had in there, sometimes it made you scared, sometimes it made you happy, sometimes it made you sad. Now I like it a lot more than when I was a kid, but I think this was pretty cool. All right, y'all, so this is the inside of the Lego store. When the kid was tiny, like six or seven, we came in and she went and sat with the Hulk. He's all the way over there on the other side of the store. But they have a little bit of everything in here. I'm trying not to record a bunch of kids because that's not my goal here. But what is this? Who is this, Friends? I don't even know what this is. Literally, look, $100 to come in here and buy this little thing and then you gotta go buy all the other little things. This is, Legos are so expensive. I remember when Legos were the things that you put together, pulled apart, left on the floor, then the parent stepped on them, then cussed you out for leaving Legos on the floor, and then they got thrown in the trash because if you can't pick up your Legos, then you don't need to have them, they're going in the garbage. But really, the parents threw them away because it was to save their feet. They didn't care about anything else. So this is kind of neat. $550 for the Infinity Saga Iron Man. So, because it's already put together is why it costs so much, I guess. But the kid wants me to come over here to see, oh, look, Jurassic Park. Man. Huh. Okay, so now I find myself as a 41-year-old woman wanting to play with Legos to put together the Jurassic Park stuff. I'm not even gonna lie. That'd be kind of cool. Got a little bit of everything. And then she's pointing at, ooh, Harry Potter. Oh, look, they have, uh, what is that, King Koopa? No, who is it? Bowser? It says it right there, the Mighty Where? Oh, the Mighty Bowser, okay. I was about to say, I used to play Mario's uh, Mario Brothers when I was little, but holy, no, you can't get that $500. You have lost your ever love of mine. Mm -mm. Nope, not even an option unless you have a kidney you want to get rid of first. But this is definitely cool. All the Harry Potter stuff is neat. They didn't even have this at Harry Potter. You would think, but I guess they don't cross cross sell, but the, how come they can sell it here, but they didn't sell it there? Oh, that's kind of neat. $300, y'all. Legos used to be like 10 bucks for like 500 Legos. That's why they were amazing. And now, look how friggin' expensive this is. Holy crap. This one? No, that one. That one? What one? We're not getting any of these. I mean, the castle would definitely be the coolest. The train is kind of cool too, but no. How many pieces are in this thing? Look, ages 16 and up. Since when are Legos 16 and up? It used to be You've got eight and up here. Obviously, you don't want a three-year-old playing with them because I'll choke on them because most three-year-olds will put any kind of toy in their mouth. But 16 and up is crazy to me. There's an 18 and up where? Oh, this one does say 18 and up. You have to be 18 years old to play with this Lego set. That is crazy. 10 and up for this Lego set, although the Batmobile is kind of baller. 
Yo, I got distracted. Look at this. I know. Look at the box. Look at this thing. $350 for the put together. Wait, is it the put together Black Panther? Or is it the whole, like is the box itself $350? No, yeah. So the box itself is $350 and then this is what it should look like when you're done putting it together. Man. Oh, and then look, you even have the Star Wars over here. This is crazy. <coughs> Sorry, coughing on you guys. So how is this only 140? Yet a train from Harry Potter is $500. Like who decides, who decides the the pricing on these things? Look at how cool this is, though. No, this one piece. That's kind of neat. Yeah, that is 140. A train is bigger than that. Probably correct. You have all kinds of stuff over here. Then you have oh look at that, y'all for Lord of the Rings people. My kid has never seen Lord of the Rings. We've done Harry Potter and everything else but we haven't done lord of the rings yet i haven't been able to interest her but i'm i want her to see it because i think it's really cool especially with the the my precious you know whatever five hundred dollars does it literally come with all the stuff though that's what i want to know does it come with all the pieces and i'm guessing it does based off the size of the box because normally look i feel like this is all it comes with and then you have to go out and buy all the little people and stuff you know they're not giving you all the little people at the same time. Hold on, y'all gotta look at this whole thing with me. I'm trying to figure it out. But it doesn't say if it comes with the people or not. I don't think it does. What? Oh wait, no, 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 I'm wrong. Look, if I just look and before I talk, includes 15 minifigures. So it does come with the people. Okay, that's kind of cool. So they've moved into like every genre too. If you guys just wanna buy your own jazz club, $230, you can buy a jazz club. Look, Wally. But the jazz club's kind of cool looking. There's just so much, I want to say random stuff here, but it's really cool. So, okay, seven and up for, what is this like? It's not random, it's show. This made me think of um, Lego Ninjago, but that's not what this is when I saw that thing there. But this is definitely neat. Oh, look it, look it, people. Hold it, wait it. Look, look. How cool is that? They even made his blanket out of Legos, like, that is Merida. so cool. Oh, from Brave, they're playing Merida from Brave. All kinds of stuff in here, keychains. You can get all the keychains. Harry Potter, Voldemort. And is that Hermione? They look like Hermione, yeah, that's neat. Look how cute. You can even get postcards, Lego postcards. See if you guys wanted a Lego postcard, $15. Y'all, that's cheaper than birthday cards these days. That might be way more interesting too. I'm not quite sure what you do with the big heads over here. Are these, oh, they're storage heads. <clears throat> okay, so you put all your Legos in there. That's kind of cool too. What is this? Look, it looked like I should have put my hand in there and mess with stuff, but no, that's not an option. That's kind of cool. Hi, kid. All right, let's go back over this way and see what else we got. Try not to get a bunch of children in this thing, y'all, because, you know, meh. I don't like to record people in general, but it's kind of difficult not to when you're at Universal Studios or Islands of Adventure or Disney Springs. So you have the Disney castles. So the castles are six and up. The, the little ones are five and up. But everything on the other side, the really expensive stuff, 10, 15, 18. Oh, look at that. The frozen castle. Arendelle, 14. That's what you're doing, sir? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Got a little bit of everything. Look how pretty. Okay, I can kind of see why this would be fun but i'm still i mean you've got ariel hello but for a hundred dollars ariel can stay there on the shelf thank you so here you have lego hulk when my kid was little I made her stand right there will you go stand right there just one recreate re recreation recreation of a picture y'all i tried but now that she's 13 and chained she is too grown to hang out with lego hulk so Disney Springs, like I said, it's really cool to walk around and look at everything, but it is definitely geared towards spending money because it's mostly stores to go in and buy things or food places to go in and eat. There's not really activities or things to do. They do have a stage kind of sort of back there where every once in a while they'll have like live music or they'll do something like that. But the majority of this place is geared at kids and getting parents to spend money on said kids, which is why we like to come here and just kind of walk around. Get our steps in, if you will. Oh, look, hold on. There's an entire store for Ghirardelli chocolate. I mean, <laughs> at what point do you need an entire store for Ghirardelli chocolate? However, I would like to go in there, which is why we're gonna keep walking past it. 
because I do not need a store's worth of Ghirardelli chocolate and I have no willpower when it comes to certain things, whether it's cakes, cupcakes, cookies, Ghirardelli chocolate, yeah, those kind of things, no willpower whatsoever. So we're definitely not going to go in there. We are, however, going to go into this place, the Marketplace Co-op. I found one of my absolute favorite sweatshirts in the entire world here. So we're going to go in here and kind of see what they've got right this minute because this is where they have the Disney vault. So you can get some old stuff you can't find anywhere else. And they have a bunch of newer stuff like uh, Disney tech on demand, which is kind of neat. How cool is that? All the old TVs, Disney vault, stuff like that. Bill, how cool is this? It's like 50s housewife meets, I don't know what to call it, but I like the, I like the whole look, I'm not gonna lie. Like these are the kind of things that I would love to just run around wearing. I think they're super cute like look at that the golf shirt that's cool looking so the kid just points out that there is a make your own candle $25 to make your own candle I'm not quite sure how it works if she wants to do it she's gotta go ask so they got all these candles over here um, bows I guess signature they're soy candles they smell really good now my friend Justin his magnolia Soap candles smell better, also soy based, but this wooden lodge one smells really good. Which one did you pick up? The raspberry vanilla? That one smells super like good. Those What's this? Peppermint. Oh, that does smell like peppermint. I'm surprised it it's like, hot it's pink. Like, it's the peppermint you get. <laughs> so basically, this is like a home decor store. It, this is totally different than what it was when I came here a couple years ago, and it was like literally old school style sweatshirts, t shirts, things like that. They've turned this more into like a. a uh, no, I don't want to buy that. I mean, it's cute. We should go. Okay, yeah, I want all of it. We're going to get none of it, though, because one, I don't need it. Two, that's mainly it. I don't need it. All right, we might be making a concession. We might be getting an egg and pancake, if I don't drop it, egg and pancake mold so we can have Mickey Mouse head shaped eggs. Found the Marvel section. Display only. Please do not touch. It'd be funny if this is like one of those um, those TikTok videos you see or the YouTube videos where it's somebody's in the suit and when you go to walk past them, they like lunge at you and scare the crap out of you. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, those are always funny. So these purses, y'all, I used to like Dooney and Burke when I was younger. Like I thought they were like the best brand and super, super cool. And then I realized their prices. Yeah, I owned one Dooney and Burke when I was younger. It's because I got it on clearance at like TJ Maxx or Ross or something like that or Marshalls. I would never, I couldn't bring myself to do it. I guess because I don't really care about purses. Purses and watches. I can't bring myself to spend that kind of money on these kind of things. Nothing wrong with those of you who do. Everybody has their own little thing that they enjoy, right? For me, it's just not ever going to be purses and watches. Maybe sneakers. I do like a good pair of sneakers, though. So this is kind of cool. Celebrate her story instead of history, you know, in honor of Women's History Month at Walt Disney World. So they got a lot of Minnie Mouse stuff and things like that over here. Kind of cute. Okay, so this is more clothing trendy stuff is what this side's supposed to be mm, not the side i need to be in y'all i'm not gonna lie i love those hoops look at them they have the mickey head to hold them in place those are so cute see i like jewelry i don't own any jewelry besides my wedding band and wedding ring i don't really wear anything i have a necklace but i don't ever wear it but i do like those all right, so back outside over here. This side, honestly, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of boring over here because this is mostly stores, but it is the shaded section. So when it's 92 degrees out in Orlando like it is today, this is probably the side you really want to hang out on because there's not a ton of sun, but there's not also a lot to do over here. So we're gonna head over to something a little more interesting. Do you remember the first time we went to, I stepped on something, I heard it. Do you remember the first time we went to Disney? Do you remember it at all? Yeah. Mm, yes. Yes. Yeah. So we took Nini and Gigi. We took the, the grandmas with us. And it was oh, a lot of fun. Chick -fil -A and there was a beatbox. Boom, boom box? A boombox? No. At Chick fil A? The, the one where you got to put like, put some money in it. Jukebox. Jukebox. Oh, yeah. We stopped at a Chick fil A, the Truitt's Cafe, on the way to tell her we were going to Disney. That was a lot of fun. But, uh, oh, look at this. Look. So they have a carousel here, too. That, that spinny thing. I can't do that. You do the spinny one sometimes, right? I can't stand the spinny one, but I like the fact they, they even have a Christmas store here. Uh, if you guys watched um, Universal Studios, you saw me talking about how they had a Christmas store at Universal. They had a Halloween store, but everywhere you go, they have like these dedicated Christmas stores. They even have one at SeaWorld, which is very weird. How you doing over there, sir? A little toasty? Doing good? Good. 
Well, the kid has decided never let a good Christmas store go to waste, so we're gonna mosey on into Christmas in the middle of March and be immediately, <laughs> um, I don't know what the word is because her mouth dropped open. She immediately wants everything in here that's Christmas related. We do enjoy Christmassy yeah. stuff. Oh, that is ridiculously soft. Oh, that's I cute, like I like that. And the carpet. Yeah, everything in here is gonna end up being super expensive. And how is that Christmassy? Like, how is this a Christmas thing? What is this for? Oh, okay, that makes sense then. Turn anything into a Christmas gimmick. I gotcha, I gotcha. Okay, now this is cute though. The wreath is cute. Yeah. And I like that they are playing Christmas music in here too. That definitely helps. And then the apron, all kinds of, look at this. Pirates of the Caribbean. What does that have to do with any, this, I don't know that has to do with anything. I'm not gonna lie. Look at the back wall. I just like the back wall. Man, I love Christmas. Ugh. So it turns out people smoke in Disney Springs too. So we're in there and a gentleman is looking at the, um, the ornaments and all of a sudden you hear pop, because he drops one and it shatters and goes absolutely everywhere. And the lady that's there is like, sir, please don't touch it, please don't touch it, because in, in, in theory he could cut himself. So of course he reached down trying to pick it up. She's like, no, 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 no. And then Kevin being the <laughs> jackass that he is, he was like, don't worry, they're just gonna bill you for it later. And the lady's like, no, we're not. We don't do that. People break these things all the time. It reminded me of when I dropped a carton of eggs at Sprouts. The entire carton hit the ground and I was like, oh no. And they're like, ah, don't even worry about it. But that was pre-egg issue. So if I did that today, they'd probably be like, ma'am, we have to charge you for that plus an extra set just for the inconvenience of having to clean it up. Y'all, so here's the Rainforest Cafe. So this thing does like a real volcano thing. Marvin, I think you mentioned this in a comment that this is where you like to go or wanted to see. Um, Y'all, y'all need to see price-wise. It's actually not awful for being inside of where it is, but they do have a really cool gift shop, if you will. Look, look, Procrastigator, get it? Y'all get it? Living the high life, cause he's a giraffe. Look at this, what? Put a pillow? Squishmallows. Squishmallows. All right, let's go see what a squishmallow is, because I don't know. Oh, these things. They're so, They're so fluffy. They Does it smell like something? Oh, look at that one. I like that one. Yeah, What's that one? one? This is cool. Oh, but here's the inside. You got the little rainforest froggy. And cha-cha? I don't know what that's about, but the inside is always cool. The big snake right there that, ugh, I don't like snakes. <laughs> you can put your hand in the boba? Why? Does it smell like something? Why do you want to put your hand in a boba? It turns inside out? Okay, well, so it's a... Okay, now that's actually kind of cool. We need this one. So you go from boba to... What is that supposed to be? Okay, that's cute. <laughs> so now I'm having to walk away from the child as she wants one... Of, so there's one that's a burrito that turns into an avocado. There's another one. She's losing her mind over these things. So I figure if I just walk away, maybe she'll change her mind. But there's the inside of the restaurant. You guys can see there. Cool looking bar. They've got all the stuff happening in there. Big old elephant chilling in that way. All kinds of stuff. And then, again, I like the top. They got little fishies. Little fishies. Oh, actually, big fishies. There's some big old fishies. But the restaurant itself is really cool with the interior. It's like you're in the actual rainforest. So that part is pretty neat. The amount of parents I see in here losing their shit with their kids lately is a lot. I think it's worse when it's hot outside, but it's also really bad when you're in places like this that cost a lot of money to go eat at some place like this and then you walk, you have to walk through the little gift store too. It makes it it makes it hard because your kids don't understand, especially when they're young. Most of these kids that I'm seeing these parents kind of losing their whatever with, they're probably under seven. And most of these kids don't understand money does not grow on trees. It costs a lot to buy these things, to do these things. And when you tell them no, that's all they hear is no. And so then they lose their minds and the parent in turn loses their mind. And then heaven forbid, everybody starts looking at you, which then makes you lose your mind even more. So that's a lot to take into consideration. Hell, mine's 13. And look, she's still chasing me with a pillow. What's that one, the bubble one? No, that's something totally different. And I'm gonna tell her no, and she's gonna mm, and pout and whatever, but she's not gonna throw the same kind of tantrum that some other little children would do. And I'm <laughs> gonna be a little bit better, I think, because at this point at 13, if she hasn't learned to accept a no, sounds like a her problem, not me. You totally need a 
need a pillow. So this little thing right here was just crocodiling or alligatoring. I don't know what to call it. It was just roaring at people. I don't know what you're supposed to call them. It's not roar, but you know what I'm talking about. So there's that. Got a little steam. I want him to do his thing, but he's not doing it. The volcano isn't volcanoing either. But maybe he'll do it. He'll do it as soon as I walk away because that's how that works. But then they have this little thing called Lava Lounge. And basically, when you're on the two-hour wait that they make you do, when it gets really busy over here, you can just come hang out inside. But you have lava in the walls, which is kind of neat. And it sounds kind of neat in here, too. And I can't get out that way, so we're just going to do a quick little U-turn. Yeah, we are. We're going to turn around and go back the other way, okay? Now he wants to alligator crocodile roar. And then he stopped. It's, I think he's doing it on purpose. Oh, there he goes. It's terrifying, terrifying. He needs a little touch-up work in the back of his throat over there. I'm sure he scares a little kid like he's supposed to, though. Oh, he hunkers down. Oh, he even moves and stuff. I didn't know he did all that. Okay, then. Little crocodile. Alligator, crocodile. Y'all, what is it? I can never tell the difference. Y'all tell me. So the other kind of cool thing from over here, there's a the little smokestack things I was saying earlier. I didn't know what they were. They go on this paddlefish boat. If you guys have seen the movie, I think it's called Death on the Nile, this movie. It looks like they have a boat that looks kind of like that. Really good movie. It's got Russell Brand in it. When he's not on YouTube, you know, giving his amazing opinions on things, he is still acting sometimes. But uh, Yafaja has walked all the way up there. We've lost him. He's gone that way. He's like a quick walker when you're not paying attention. But then you've got the, the balloon is up again. And there's boathouse and little boats there because if you're staying, they've got boats. If you're staying over in these areas over here, you can, again, like little boat taxis, kind of like they had at Universal. Look at the little doggy. Hold on. I'm trying not to like get up all on these people, but they have a little golden doodle that looks like our dog Max, but so much smaller. Oh, how freaking cute. Okay. Nope. Stop doing stuff like that. I don't like to record people on purpose, but this is kind of cool looking. I've lost the man. Or did we walk past him? Huh? Oh, we walked past him. <laughs> he beat us. So this is one of our favorite places. You guys can see here. It's like, it's supposed to be like the top of Mount Everest, I guess. I don't know. But that's the T-Rex uh, restaurant. And that place will have like a, the last time we came here, it was like a four hour wait, dinosaur. Yeah. You would think that that would be at, um, Universal because of Jurassic Park and stuff, but it's over here. Well, it's not really a Jurassic Park thing. It's just like it's not, yeah, it's true. It's not really Jurassic Park themed. It is just dinosaur themed and it's pretty baller. But the last time we came with the family, I think there was only, I think there were eight of us and we tried to get a table and they're like, that's going to be about a four hour wait. And it's like, man, if you don't, aren't preemptive with when you're going to be hungry, you're never going to get into these places. We saw that happen last night. We ate at Cowfish at Universal Studios City Walk. We put our name on the list at noon in order to get an 8.30 reservation. As we're leaving the place around 10 o'clock, this guy walks up with like four kids and he's like, hey, we'd like a table for five. And they, the person was like, sorry, we're booked up for the rest of the night. And the guy was like, well, I really want sushi. And the girl goes, well, then I guess you better book it for tomorrow, <laughs> like ahead of time. So let me show you guys uh, this T-Rex thing. Hold on. The good news is they have all this uh, shaded seating areas around because like I said it gets real hot in the middle of Orlando and it's only March in June and July it's place like 100 something degrees but look how cool this is the dinosaur goes all the way across the line gets pretty long but we got to get inside to the store I got to show you the dinosaur store on the inside I think this is like the coolest thing let's look at their menu though and compare it to kind of the um, cafe the rainforest one I think it's a little bit so you've got T-Rex here. Their prices are all about the same everywhere, but you, it's not even that much more than places outside like a Longhorn or places like that, which is kind of crazy. The, the place we ate at yesterday inside Universal over by the um, Jurassic Park section, you got a ton of food for the money. So maybe here also ton of food for the money. So the little car thing's kind of cool, but here you go. Here's the T-Rex sign. You walk in here and then you have the dinosaur. Look. Now the first time we came here, this thing scared the crap out of the kid. And all it does is move. I don't think it yells. Oh, it roared? Okay, I couldn't remember. But this in here is pretty neat with the sun and 
moons and planets and things like that. But this thing was pretty neat. Yeah. The little little stegosaurus. <laughs> You guys have heard of Build-A-Bear, right? They have built a dino over here. You can come in here and build your own dinosaur. So you go over here and you pick out the dinosaur skin that you want or whatever. You can pick it and then you can go... I don't know why there's a little monkey in here. Build a dino. Yeah. Okay, sloth maybe. But the, the Easter bunny looking thing doesn't really make that much sense. I would totally build the brontosaurus though, personally. I would take the brontosaurus all day long. And he looks like a wannabe, um, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Godzilla, but really I think it's supposed to be a stegosaurus because of this thing. You know what a stegosaurus is. So there she is getting all the stuff. She's putting the fluffy stuff inside there. That's what goes inside your dinosaur. So she's filling up a dinosaur right now. Look at that. That is the coolest. And you can put little things in there that put noise in them and stuff too, which is really neat. I think I got and look, when it's all said and done, you can put little outfits on them, little shoes and whatnot. That's super cute. If you could build one that big, that'd be neat. I didn't see one that, like that, that big though. So this is not something I've ever seen before. Warmy, snuggable, huggable, lovable, warm them up in a microwave. At no point in my life have I ever thought to put my stuffed animal into a microwave to warm it up. It feels like the, you gotta be real careful because then your kids might do that with a different stuffed animal if they don't know any better and it's gonna have metal in it and then wow, that's a know. weird little explosion. So Wait. you gotta be real, real careful on what's microwavable and what's not. Well, you would think the eyeballs wouldn't be, but I don't know y'all. We actually ate at this uh, Terralina last time we were here and it was okay. It was not my absolute favorite. I do want to say that I would love to go to Paddlefish one day because they have, you can't see it from here, they have a little rooftop section where you can sit and eat and it has lights strung across it. And I think that'd be great during the evening when the lights are going down and you can just sit there and chill and look out over the, I want to call it a park. This isn't a park. Disney Springs, a shopping center, if you will, and have a nightcap and just hang out. This bakery thing normally has a line at it. They have all kinds of random stuff over here, but there's a place here called Everglaze. It's a donut place. We actually didn't make it to Voodoo Donuts last night at City Walk because the line was ridiculous. And even to order it on the app for pickup would have taken like an hour and a half. And by the time we were done eating, we were all tired. So no Voodoo Donuts were had by us yesterday. So today we're gonna go to Everglaze here at Disney Springs and try their donuts out instead. So we're walking by and I see the sign that says, Amp Ampicar launch like or Amphicar Amphicar like an amphibian Amphicar launch and I'm like what is happening over there and we get right over here and it's literally a car in the water I can't zoom in but you guys can kind of sort of see what's happening there it's literally a car in the water I guess it's half boat half car I'm not quite sure kind of ball or whatever it is they have one about to launch right now there's some girls sitting in it getting ready that's kind of neat but y'all don't take your regular car out to water and try to do this because you will drown. It's not a good idea in your regular car. All right, so here we go. Here it comes. They're gonna launch this thing. So from here, I don't know if you guys can see it, there is a propeller at the very back. That is so cool. Can y'all hear that? It's got a little motor. Okay, that's neat, I'm not gonna lie. So I wonder if I go home and throw a propeller on the back of the Jeep, if I can just take it into the water anytime I want, if, that, if that's how this works. And then they have this like Hydra Trek. That's kind of cool too. I have questions on how they've made this possible and feasible. If you guys know answers, let me know. If you know how to do this, let me know. And I'm bringing you my Jeep and we'll turn it into a little uh, Amphicar. <laughs> All right, let's see what this thing looks like when it comes out of the water, because now I'm curious how this works. It's just regular wheels, y'all. I need to understand how this works. Y'all, help me figure it out. All right, so you guys can see there's a line outside and you're thinking to yourself, man, that must be a really nice place for lunch, right? No, it's a bakery. It's a bakery, y'all. Gideon's Bakehouse. Cookies, cakes, and curiosities. I've never been inside because there's always a line. The other place I showed you a second ago also normally has a small line, but not like this place. And I wanna know what's in there so if you guys have ever been here to Gideon's Bakehouse, leave a comment below, let me know what's happening inside. So the balloon place is called the Edison, which is fitting. Trans Global Airways, dream it, then do it. 
I wonder what it's like. I've never gone inside, so we're gonna go inside together. The thing's going up right now. We're gonna go in here together. They have food. How does this place work? I'm very curious. All I know is it's really cool looking inside. Look at that. Oh, those are neat. I, you can eat in the sky. I don't know, this place is cool looking inside. I know that much. Huh. All right, so I was wrong. This is not the one that has anything to do with the hot air balloon. This is just a restaurant bar, but y'all, this is a baller looking restaurant bar. Look at this couch. Look how comfy this looks. Look how nice this is in here. This feels like it should be in New York somewhere. This feels like a New York kind of location. Nice comfy couch. This definitely feels New York style to me. Oh man, like a speakeasy kind of thing. Or a speakeasy is more of like a New Orleans, New Orleans, Louisiana kind of thing. But y'all, this is, this is nice in here. This is the kind of place I would pick over a Planet Hollywood or Hard Rock Cafe. I like stuff that has a little bit of a, uh, personality, a little bit of a je ne sais quoi, if you will. I don't know what that means. It just sounds right here. Um, but I like these kind of things more than your cookie cutter, run of the mill, have them in every single city kind of restaurants. Chili's, Longhorn, blah, blah, blah. Yes, they have great food, but when we go places, we want to we wanna go to the places you can't find anywhere else like this. I like this kind of booth. This booth actually reminds me of Carmine's. If you guys have ever been at Carmine's, there's one in New York. It's a family style Italian restaurant. There's one in Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, but that rounded booth is the kind of thing we, stay, we, we, we sat in. And look, they've even got old pictures on the wall. Y'all, my brain is going, is that the Titanic? Is that the Titanic? Is that what we're showing right now? Is the Titanic before it uh, sunk? I don't think it's the Titanic though. Can y'all see what that is? That's a really long ship, whatever it is. Anyway. So the um, balloon thingy is still up. Can you guys, you can't see from there, I don't think, but there's people on the little outskirts. And my brain goes, yes, I would love to do that. And then my brain goes, ma'am, you will have a massive panic attack and pass out before you ever make it to the top and then have like a weird little heart attack because I don't do well with stuff like that that looks like you could literally just fall over the edge or it could plummet to the earth. I don't know that it's a good idea for me personally, so probably not gonna do it. I like these kind of trees. I know it's off topic, but I love big trees like that. So we're gonna go over here to one of our favorite Starbuckses, Starbucks, Starbucks. I don't think you pluralize it. We're gonna go to the Starbucks in here. They've got really cool interior stuff. So I'll show you that once we get inside. All right, so here is the thing. So see Disney Springs from the air. Flight is not recommended for those prone to motion sickness. Hello, vertigo, hello, heart problems. Not really. All other conditions that are aggravated by flight, you know, like panic attacks and anxiety and all that other fun stuff. So mm, not for me, but there are your prices. If you're under two, you're free. If you're 10 and up, you're 25. Everybody in the middle, 20 bucks. It doesn't say how long you get to be up there for. If it's like a three minute thing for that much money, mm, kiss my grits. But if you get to stay up there for a good amount of time, maybe possibly worth it. So it's actually coming back down right now, which is kind of neat. You don't realize how high up 400 feet is until you're standing here, and that's not nearly as high as it was. But if you're standing here and that big old thing's coming right at you, it's a little daunting. I used to love when I was little, my mom and I would go to this place um, in South Carolina where they would do the hot air balloon races or launches from, I think they were races, and there would be hundreds of hot air balloons leaving at once. And it was probably one of the coolest things in the world to me when I was little. Would I get in one? Nah. What if you were like, hey, but it's free? Nah. What if you're like, hey, you can see the world? Nah, this is still not gonna happen because to me it's also slightly terrifying, but this is kind of neat. But you see how windy it is and how much work it is just to land this thing? No, I'm, I'm okay. I don't really wanna do it, but it is still really cool looking. Now we're gonna go into this baller Starbucks. I like this one because I like the outside of it. I think it's cool looking with like the wood beams and the all black and then weirdly with the grass on top. I don't think you can go up there for anything. It just looks kind of neat. And palm trees. Anytime you put a palm tree on it, I'm excited. So this back wall used to be like a screen that you could ride on and things moved around. Now it's just regular, but I found the people. That's so cool. Alrighty, so now we're back outside of Starbucks. You got some Star Wars Galactic Outposts over here. What's cool is over here they have these little food trucks. Unfortunately, the food trucks don't open until later in the day um, during the week. On the weekend, they're open pretty much the whole time. But Star Wars store, you've got Marvel, and you have a huge AMC that's really neat. But what's really cool is the Splitsville Luxury Lanes down there. 
show you guys when we get a little bit closer. So it's kind of weird, you got Sunglass Hut here, but this is what it looks like now. I wonder what happened to it. I'm trying to figure out if maybe there's like a fire or something weird, because I don't know why it looks like that. But anyway, so we're gonna go down here to, she got two hands of uh, drinks over here. Look, they have a, I don't know what was right here. Something went out right here. Salt and straw, that's new too. That's a new restaurant, it looks like. And they're doing a lot of work back here, but I wonder what they're doing back here. Before, there was nothing here. It looks like they're putting in some sort of restaurant or something. So this looks like a ice cream place. I've never seen that one before. And then AMC, there's... So the luxury lanes, we came here, the first time we came here, we went in there and bowled. It's a lot of fun. But they do a lot. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> when we came though, they had live music at the end of the bar, which was kind of neat. We were able to sit over here. This was a just a covered sitting area, and you could watch the live music. And then they have this huge, uh, I don't know how to say that name for the Mexican restaurant, but the M&M store, y'all, that thing will have a line a mile long outside of it of people waiting to go in there because you can get personalized M&M stuff. And then that white tent there, that's Cirque du Soleil. We haven't done that one before. I'm kind of curious what it's like, but we have not done that one. But I'm going to take you guys into this M&M store because it's actually really cool. And then over here, you've got House of Blues. We haven't been in there before either, but we're going to check out the M&M store real quick. All right, guys, so welcome to M&M's. Let's go see what this is like in here. M&M's at Disney Springs. And then everything is color-coded. It's kind of neat when you come in. Got the orange. But what's kind of neat are the little containers with all the M&M's in them. The best part, though, y'all, on top of, oh, the pop, popping bottles. Okay, so you've got those kind of things. And then you have, like, the... See, I got one of these last time. I got a pink one because Michelle M, so it worked for me. We have this here, and then you've got. Hi, guys. Ooh, hi. I would love a sample. Of course, take anyone you'd like. It's our caramel cold brew, so it's got that caramel, caramel cold brew with coffee in the center with Ooh, milk chocolate. Yummy! Thank you so of much. Of course, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. So we're about to eat these real quick, but first I want to show you guys the walls of M&Ms. Can y'all see all the way back there? Wall of M&Ms. Super cool all kinds of stuff but look at this four bottles for forty dollars and you can mix and match the different kinds like they've got all different ones that you can pick from let me try to take you guys over here i'm trying not to look they even have like the little onesies for the babies and stuff super cute but my favorite i'm trying to get there y'all there's a lot of people here like always but my favorite one is this wall of flavors look at this thing You've got all different kinds, or you have the individual colors, and you can come in here, and you can pick your container or just a bag if you want and fill it with whatever you want. They have the little M&M thing where you can put your M&Ms in here and then do the little thing and get them out there like a gumball machine. But this thing is so cool. $18 per pound, y'all. That's a lot of money for some M&Ms, but it's still cool that you can decide what you want on your own. It's just like Jelly Bean. Jelly Belly used to do at the candy stores. But I absolutely love how it looks in here. I gotta take one more because if I take, if I go back and don't take one to the man, he's gonna be so upset. Thank you so much. These are actually really good. Caramel cream cold brew. So those were tasty. Technically I have two here for the man, but if he uh, takes too long or doesn't want them, please understand I'm eating two more of these. Now here's the house of blues. That's kind of cool looking. Hey sir, I brought you two of the brand new M&M's. <laughs> These are caramel chocolate cold brew. Caramel? You have to try it. It's cold caramel. brew. Caramel. 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 <laughs> Don't you dare. They're actually really Nasty. good. Caramel cold brew. What you think? Nom, nom, nom. Nom, nom, nom. That's pretty tasty, right? It's like all the other M&M's. Okay, yeah, well. I like it. Sometimes they all taste the same, but I think those are actually pretty good. But I've never been in here. Ooh, look. For those of you who like House of Blues, never been in here, never seen this stuff. Blues Brothers, yes. Man, Dan Aykroyd's one of my absolute favorites in uh, Jim Belushi. Right, Jim Belushi, but I love Dan Aykroyd. He can, he can do no wrong in anything he's in. 
Now this place here, City Works, has never been open when we've been, oh, that's cool. It's never been open when we've been by. So is this their Cirque du Soleil? It used to be something else in here. Uh, yeah, it used to be an ESPN uh, thing. Okay, so that's the Cirque du Soleil, which is that big tent right over there. Um, but we've never been over to the City Works. I don't know what used to be in there. I still think it, it was a sports place, right? But it was never open, like some sort of NBA, NFL memorabilia kind of thing, but it was never open. That could be interesting one day. Smokehouse. I really wish we had time to go to see Cirque du Soleil, but not this trip. I had to make sure I showed you guys the House of Blues water tower just because it's kind of cool looking. And this is the whole House of Blues restaurant over there. Pretty large, much bigger than I expected it to be. So right across from Splitsville, the bowling place is Everglazed uh, Donuts and Cold Brew. And what's weird is that it looks like it wants to be a Dunkin' Donuts, just the way the words look, and then the orange right next to the brown, like Dunkin' Donuts is. But there's a little bit different. So the last time we were here, the kid got one that had um, Fruity Pebbles on it. Is that what it was? Fruity Pebbles on top. You guys can see back here is, in theory, where they make the donuts. And... Oh, oh yeah, so they have the bacon caramel one, I think. And then the kid got this one up here, which is hard to see, but that is the fruity fruity pebbles. No, that's Crispy's things, though. I don't know what that one is. All these look pretty good, but we're going to go in here real quick and uh, take a look-see and see what we got. What's happening on the inside? Sorry, bug. I was actually recording your butt. That's weird. I wasn't paying attention. Here's that. Hello. So, look at that one. Look at the cookies and cream one. Look at the chocolate sprinkle, peanut butter. Do you want to split one of them? No, You want chef's cake or, oh, s'mores? You can't do all of them. We don't need 75 donuts. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. How about we just do a cinnamon roll and call it done? I don't like cinnamon rolls. Chocolate iced? What's that? That one over there. Are you going to do the bacon? We need something, ew. Ew. We need something we can't. If you don't mind. All right, so we're going to get a bag for these. 1746 for three donuts. We all look how big those donuts are. So that's helpful. We're not going to eat all of it at once. In theory, we're not going to eat all of it at once. We're probably going to eat all of it at once, but it'll be okay. So we weren't supposed to get those, but we did get those. But child, we're going to wait to eat them. We're not going to eat them right this second, right? Right? We're waiting? Okay, cool. Oh, I like the little outdoor seating area. That's kind of nice. All right. So we still haven't seen Quantumania, the new the or scream or creed we haven't seen any of the new movies yet we thought about going to see one while we're here at the amc theater here because the one here at disney springs they have the best seats the seats heat up y'all and they recline and they're like big and cushy when she and i did our first and only mother-daughter trip a few years ago we came here and saw the lion king at the amc theater and it was a lot of fun it's one of those dine and watch ones so we had burgers and watched the movie got to recline in the seat and turn on the heater and it was just it was really nice so we thought about trying to see another one while we're here but I don't know if we really want to today or if it's really worth it quantum mania doesn't look that good to me in all honesty all the other Marvel movies I've liked but the newest one me here's one of those things I was talking about what kind of Mickey is this okay the pants are kind of cool but I don't love the new Mickey so there's the AMC I was telling you guys about, this fun little fountain. There was actually a kid who was trying to climb in here and swim in it last time we were here. And I'm like, I don't think you're supposed to do that. But here you go, you got Planet Hollywood in there. It's actually really neat. They have screens up all over the place. They play music, they play movie clips, all kinds of stuff. That Coca-Cola building over there is kind of cool. The kid likes to go in there because they do have the fountain thing up top where you can get as many different Cokes as you want. They have Coca-Cola flavored chapsticks. They have Coca-Cola t-shirts. They have everything to do with Coca-Cola. Which is always weird to me that people want to own Coca-Cola, like t-shirts and things like that. But I guess M&M is just as weird, right? All right, so here is a Coca-Cola place. Phantom, Melon, Frosty, Sprite, Cucumber. Huh, that's interesting. But here is the Coca-Cola store. Like literally everything in here is Coca-Cola related. You got shirts, you got cups, you got pillows. I don't know why you would need a Coca-Cola pillow, but at one point my kid had a Coca-Cola sweatshirt she got. They even have it in different colors, not even Coke colors. So you can have it in your earth tones if you want. You can have it in your beachy colors if you want. And you don't just have to have Coke, y'all. You can have Sprite. You can have Fanta. You can have a little bit of everything in here. Oh, and they have it in different languages too. Spanish, Toma, uh, whatever. And then um, 
Japanese Chinese. I don't know the difference, but I can tell you that those two are different countries right there. Same thing here. These are cool though. I do like all the different things. That one's kind of neat. You can even have some uh, Coca-Cola or Diet Coke slides, slippers, whatnot. Cherry Coke shirts. Like there's just so much random stuff here that you wouldn't expect to ever get. You want a hat that shows Dr. Pepper and <laughs> Cherry Coke. It's so weird. But this place is packed, like always. You don't forget about the backpacks and stuff. You gotta have your backpacks, your manly, over the shoulder back slings. Like, they got a little bit of everything here. Your clear backpacks, your socks. What we got over here? Scrunchies, you want a little Coca-Cola Panda in your hair. Now I won't lie, I had one of these when I was younger to hold all the money in, but it was like bigger than that. It was. Actually, it was bigger than that one, too. The small ones are cute. Do I need it? Nope. All right, so the other place that people have been going, there's a thing called Chicken Chicken Guy. I don't know what it is, but it was really busy last time we were here. You've even got a Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill. Never been over there, either. But this little covered section of shopping is always nice when it's raining, because this is one of the only covered parts in the entire Disney Springs that you can go stand in when it's raining or if it's so incredibly blazing hot that you just can't handle the sun anymore, which is about right now because it is, I want to say 92, 93 out. But in here you have a few of the higher end stores. There's a lot of high end stores out here, but you've got like Tommy Bahama, you've got Columbia, Sugar Boo, which is one of my favorite words, <laughs> Johnson and Murphy. But right in the middle, they're like, listen, you got to walk around this place with all these people, all these kids that want to go shopping and stuff. Might as well have yourself an adult beverage while you do it. But it is definitely nice in here. Again, I like the high ceiling and the beams and all kinds of stuff. But this is pretty much what Disney Springs consists of, shops and food, and that's about it. So then you get out here, you got nice palm trees and a couple other stores. Um, Ugg inside there was closed down, which is surprising to me, but in 90 degree weather, how many people really need a pair of Uggs? It doesn't really get freezing cold in Orlando at any point in time. So it makes sense for it to go out of business, honestly. My kid's excited, they have a Sephora makeup place down there and they have a really nice jewelry place here that sells a bunch of Disney jewelry. We might have to make a little pit stop in there also. So I tried to hang out in there as long as humanly possible, but I can tell I'm clearly getting older because it smells like a perfume bomb threw up and I could not do it anymore without my head just like dying. So I left, the kid's still in there. She'll be out in a second though. So this is one of my favorites to go into and just look. Ever after Jewelry Co. and accessories, I will probably never buy anything in here because it's kind of expensive, but they have really pretty jewelry and bags and things here. And it's very busy today, but I like the big castle they have. But there's definitely a lot of purses, a lot of Dooney and Burks in here. Mickey Mouse, look, $300. Isn't that, that cute? Limited edition Dooney and Burke. Uh, this is to get you into Disney parks, your little bands. That's probably like stupid expensive too. I don't see a price no, anywhere. But... Oh, wow. I'm not going to lie though. I love these kind of things. With all the Mickey stuff. Super pretty. And then they had a castle here one time that I really wanted. They got Dumbo. I love Dumbo. Maleficent. Maleficent. You're not getting Maleficent. They have some really cute stuff though. All right, so really pretty stuff, but way too many people in that tight little store, so we're just gonna go ahead and jump on out. There's, we're almost back to the front. We're back to the Ron John over there, and then it's all said and done. Hey, Kendra Scott, we have one of those at home too. Normally I go into Ron John. I love Ron John, I have Ron John from everywhere, but I got Ron John last time we were here, so I don't really see the need to go today because I don't need to spend any more money. Didn't go into Under Armour because I'm not working out over here, so there's no point, but I love this place. No, we're not going to go in. We're just going to look at it and keep it moving. Oh, it smells good in there. All right, so we are leaving. <laughs> uh, so we're leaving Disney Springs now. Did you have fun? Yes. Even though it's hot. Was the food good? Yeah, mm -hmm. Decent. The decent. Was your Starbucks good? Yes. Okay. I got something from TikTok and it was so good. It was like, actually very good. It had it some better. hazelnut. It was like, it was iced latte with hazelnut syrup. Vanilla sweet cream, cold foam, and caramel drizzle. Caramel drizzle. The caramel drizzle is what did it. So now we're heading out of here and headed back to where we've been staying, and we're just gonna veg out in the room and watch movies and call it done. So thank you guys for hanging out with us. I love you all. Goodbye.